Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. I am also the medical author of the two books Focus Neurology and Exam Oriented Clinical Neurology. We are continuing with the series of lectures of Prime Neurology. As the name suggests, Prime Neurology contains all the essential elements of neurology. There are 50 episodes of Prime Neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of Prime Neurology, one would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology. Right now we are on Prime Neurology Part 14 Spinal Cord Disorders Part 1 Clinical Anatomy Spinal Cord Disorders and Paraplegia In a small cross-sectional area, almost the entire motor output and sensory input of the trunk and limbs are present and therefore diseases of the spinal cord are devastating. The knowledge of the anatomy and the clinical features of spinal cord diseases is required for the successful localization of spinal cord disorders. The spinal cord is an extension of the CNS contained within the bony spinal canal. It originates at the level of the medulla and continues caudally to the conus medullaris at the lumbar level. The adult spinal cord is enlarged in the cervical and lumbar regions where neurons that innervate the upper and lower extremities respectively are located. The white matter tracts containing ascending sensory and descending motor pathways are located peripherally whereas nerve cell bodies are present in the inner region of the grey matter that surrounds the central canal anatomically an extension of the fourth ventricle. The spinal cord has 31 segments, each defined by an exiting ventral motor root and entering dorsal sensory root. So this is the transverse section of the spinal cord. So here you can see the ascending tracks on this side and the descending motor tracks on the other side. So these are the ascending sensory tracks. So posteriorly what we see is the posterior column which is responsible for joint position vibration sense known as fasciculus cuneatus and fasciculus gracilis. The organization is CTLS, cervical thoracic lumbar sacral. Here you can see the dorsal root. Here it is dorsal spinocerebellar tract and here it is ventral spinocerebellar tract and this is the main tract that is lateral spinothalamic tract which carries pain and temperature sensation. So we have a ventral root here and this is the ventral spinothalamic tract which has got a very minor role and responsible for pressure and touch. So descending motor tracts, here we have ventral uncrossed corticospinal tract which has got a role for distal limb, limb movements but it is a minor role. Then we have the tectospinal tract, we have the ventral reticulospinal tract, the vestibulospinal tract and lateral reticulospinal tract. These are basically responsible for axial and proximal limb movements. And of course the most important tract is the lateral corticospinal tract which is responsible for distal limb movements and a contribution from the rubrospinal tract. So this is the most important tract that is the lateral corticospinal tract. So this is the transverse section of the spinal cord. There is a discrepancy between the roots and the vertebral bodies because during embryologic development growth of the cord lags behind that of the vertebral column and the mature spinal cord ends at the L1 vertebral body. The lower spinal nerves take an increasingly downward course to exit via the intervertebral foramina. The relationship between the spinal cord segment and the corresponding vertebral bodies are as follows. 
So the upper cervical cord, this is the spinal cord level and corresponding vertebral level, but vertebral body level. Upper cervical same as the cord level, lower cervical one level higher, upper thoracic two levels higher, lower thoracic two to three levels higher, and lumbar corresponds to T10 to T12 vertebral body and sacral corresponds to T12 and L1 vertebral body. Another important point is that the first seven pairs of spinal nerves exit above the same numbered vertebral bodies whereas all the subsequent nerves exit below the same number vertebral bodies because of the presence of eight cervical cord segments but only seven cervical vertebrae. The presence of a horizontally defined level below which sensory, motor and autonomic function is impaired is the hallmark of a, spy, of a lesion of the spinal cord. Sensory loss below this level is the result of the damage to the spinothalamic tract on the opposite side, one to two segments higher in the case of a unilateral spinal cord lesion and at the level of a bilateral lesion. Why is it so? The discrepancy in the level of a unilateral lesion is the result of the course of the second order sensory fibers which originate in the dorsal horn and ascend for one or two levels as they cross anterior to the central canal to join the opposite spinothalamic tract. Lesions that transect the descending corticospinal tract and other motor tracts cause paraplegia or quadriplegia with heightened deep tendon reflexes, Babinski sign and eventual spasticity that is upper motor neuron syndrome. Transverse damage to the cord also produces autonomic disturbances consisting of absence sweating below the cord level and bubble, bladder and sexual dysfunction. The uppermost level of a spinal cord lesion can also be localized by the segmental signs corresponding to the disturbed motor or sensory innervations by an individual cord segment. A band of altered sensation that is hyperalgesia or hyperpathia at the upper end of the sensory disturbance or fasciculations or atrophy in the muscles innervated by one or several segments or decreased or absent reflex may be noted at this level. Spinal shock what is spinal shock with severe and acute transverse lesions the limbs initially may be flaccid rather than spastic known as the spinal shock which may last for several days the blood supply to the spinal cord the spinal cord is supplied by a single anterior spinal artery and paired posterior spinal arteries a single anterior spinal artery formed by the union of arterial branches that pass caudally from each vertebral artery and unite in the midline near the foramen magnum. It supplies the entire spinal cord except the posterior part where the posterior columns lie. Whereas the paired posterior spinal arteries, they also arise from the vertebral arteries and posterior medullary arteries join them at irregular intervals. They supply the posterior part of the spinal cord where the posterior columns lie. So the entire spinal cord is supplied by the single anterior spinal artery except the posterior column which is supplied by the paired posterior spinal arteries. There is also reinforcement by medullary arteries which are branches of ascending cervical artery at the level of cervical region, intercostals at the level of the thorax and lumbar, iliolumbar and lateral sacral arteries at the level of the abdomen. The largest medullary artery, the great anterior radicular artery of Adam Kivix, arises between T9 and L2. The upper thoracic segment near T4 have been traditionally thought particularly vulnerable to ischemia. So this is the arterial supply of the spinal cord. So this is the area supplied by the posterior spinal artery, mainly it supplies the posterior column. And this is the entire area supplied by the anterior spinal artery. So the anterior spinal artery supplies the entire spinal cord except the posterior column which is supplied by the posterior spinal artery. So here you can see this is the anterior spinal artery. 
these are the radicular anti radicular branch this is the lateral spinal artery this is the intercostal artery so there's a reinforcement so this is the posterior radicular artery this is the arterial vasorum and this is the posterior spinal artery so you can see the paired posterior spinal arteries there are two posterior spinal arteries whereas there is a single anterior spinal artery but these are reinforced by the medullary arteries they come from the intercostal artery so this is the blood supply of the spinal cord so these are the wonderful concepts of the clinical anatomy of the spinal cord i hope you have enjoyed listening to these wonderful concepts of the clinical anatomy of the spinal cord lesions the other important concepts of clinical neurology i put it in a book called exam oriented clinical neurology published by white army publication author is myself dr s srinivas this book will be very useful for students appearing for clinical neurology exams the other book i written is focus neurology published by cbs publishers and distributors the author is dr s srinivas myself this book contains all the essential theoretical aspects of neurology put it put in a question answer format this book will be very useful for students appearing for viva or oral exams it contains all the important neurology information in a question answer format this book is available from all leading booksellers online including amazon so if interested this book could be purchased online as i said earlier there are 50 episodes of prime neurology and if one listens to all these 50 episodes of prime neurology they would have acquired a good knowledge of neurology so if you have liked this channel please like and share the channel but please subscribe to my youtube channel dr srinivas medical concepts which is india's leading neurology educational youtube channel and my bp page dr srinivas medical concepts thank you bye